Okay. <clears throat> All right, cool. So, um, so I have about another uh, hour or so, a little over an hour to do another session. And I wanted to pick up uh, pretty directly from where we left off last time, which is that we got the uh, shader to compile and we're like handling the errors in a, in a nice way, uh, just like passing it through these option and result types. Um, but there's a few things about this that are like kind of bothering me. First of all, we haven't, like we, we still have this uh, commented out of uh, making sure that we're actually getting proper errors when the, when the shader is bad. And the other is that what I ended up doing uh, was probably like the better way of doing it, of creating this uh, program and then passing ownership through this whole chain. I, I kind of like that because then this whole thing is just one big expression and you know, and if we ever do have an error in the uh, in the result type, like if we you know if we look here, this uh, return is a result with the program as the have you path and uh, a string as the uh, as an error path. So if we do end up with an error, then the um, the program will be dropped. Like you know, ownership, like it'll just go out of scope and and it'll it'll be dropped, and that makes sense. You know, that's good because then we don't like. That's what should happen. It's no longer going to be valid. Uh, but there are a couple things that are bothering me um, about that. Um, first of all, it was just, you know, I just ended up with it because that's what I could get to compile. And right where we left off last time, I posted this uh, question on the Rust users forum. Uh, let me just open that up. Um, do, 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 do. So yeah, um, and someone pointed me to this idea of like this as ref, which I didn't know about. In fact, let's just look that up. I want to learn a little bit about that. Ref, rest. Show the value to a reference value within generic code, okay. I don't get why this is really. How is this different than just like adding the ampersand when making a reference? Okay, I think I'll just like learn more about this. The next time it comes up, I think I'm gonna uh, try this. Um, oh, converts from option T to option NT. That's a little bit different. Oh, that's actually exactly what I asked. Okay. All right, but this is interesting. He's saying go from a reference of an option T to an option of a reference T. That's that's kind of cool. That's interesting. Uh, but is that really what's happening? All right, I guess. Okay. Anyway, you know, like I said, um, I'm actually happy with the way this is working. Um, one more thing, though, if we look at the, um, our TypeScript reference stuff. Is that I also had all this other stuff of like freeing the shader code um, when when we're done because once it's compiled into a program we no longer need the individual uh, vertex and fragment stuff. So if we look here again, this is not you know very pretty code, but but it works. So, so we have these ideas of like, we have this cleanup shaders function of detaching and deleting the shader. Um, and it's actually run even when everything goes well. Like once we end up with our program, we actually want to um, also detach and delete the shaders. And we're not doing that here. At the end, we just get the program at the end. So again, the, the goals now, here, let me just like write this in here, uh, like what we want to do to do. Okay, one is we want to make sure, uh, or actually see specific error messages when compiling a faulty shader. 
Okay, two is we want to um, have routine to detach and delete shader. Um, let's call this, let's give this a name, uh, cleanup shaders. program to call cleanup shaders also free program because i don't think this stuff is called automatically like i i mean i guess we go look at the web sys whoa why is this okay we go look at the web sys uh, source and see like if any of these are implemented by drop you know what? we should do that for program i really don't know if it's going to happen with the shaders but the program it might so we might as well <clears throat> go take a look at that so web sys, and what are we looking for? We're looking for webgl program. And I think what we want to look for is like what's implemented on the drop tray. Does it not have any drop tray. Yo, what? This is really uh, hard to read. Um, all right, I'm not gonna be able to make sense of this. We're, we're just gonna. Um, okay. This brings another point of that means that the program isn't actually being cleaned up when it goes out of scope. So I think what we actually want to do is implement drop for a program. So um, I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Can we do that? Because like the orphan rules? I don't know. I don't know if we can. But let's uh, see if we can implement drop for a GL program. I mean, that'll be nice. Then that will kind of call this cleanup program automatically, which is cool. Um, but that's going to be a headache because it's calling cleanup shaders. All right, let's just go through this. Let's start with this first one. See specific error message when compiling a faulty shader. So let's go break our shader. Uh, we just, again, we just had this uh, simple, you know, simple stuff for now. The truth is all these uniforms, uh, uh, I don't even think I want to do that yet. I, I think I just want to... Um, like just do it by hand um like without supplying these uh these matrices because i don't yet know like what format we want to pass data around in for matrices yet but all right let's just break this thing um okay we want to get an error now that's not good are we even oh all right i think we have to set our uh Chokidar or Chokidar or whatever it's called. Um, we have to set it to uh, watch uh, also GLSL files. Otherwise, Rust won't recompile. Um, how do you pass multiple arguments to... I guess Chokidar is probably the usual pronunciation, right? Uh, Chokidar. Kalai. Um, okay, just each one in quotes, fine. Again, in case uh, you're watching this, but you didn't watch one of the previous streams, the idea is that in uh, development mode, we <clears throat> we tell Rust to recompile um, every time one of the .rs files changes. And because we're using uh, workspaces, like we look at our project structure, we have like creates, examples. So because we're in workspaces, we might be, we are uh, running our Webpack project inside here, like inside this example slash WebGL demo. And yeah, we're linking to the other um, crates, but it's not going to actually 
know to reload and maybe even compile um, unless we tell it to like rebuild, which we have to point it at like all of the Rust files throughout the whole workspace, not just the ones in this folder. Um, and now we're also doing it for GLSL. So we actually have to restart um, the dev thingy. Okay. Whoops. All right. You know what, I might as well like promote this whole thing on the Rust user forum also. Um, you know, I'll do that later. There's no reason to do this uh, like live on the video, but it'd be nice to like, get people to join in. Anyway, um, what was I doing? Right, so we want to see Huh. Well, first of all, what I want to know uh, right off the bat is like, um, is this actually uh, recompiling when we change the GLSL stuff? No, it's, oh yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Um, that's a good sign. But now why is it compiling? It shouldn't, I mean, this is definitely invalid. All right. Right. Okay. Oh, because we just because all this stuff is commented out. Um, hmm. What I really want to do is for right now. I think I want a console log. Um, I think we can do this. I don't, I'm not sure, but I think we can. Um, console log one. Um, you know, I had this like, I think I had this other uh, routine. like log it out okay why not console what do you mean undeclared so let's clear all this stuff out so how did i how did i do it in the other place right use web oh it's All right, so let's see if we get something here. False, true, okay. So, okay, so this is gonna be a Boolean. Um, a little confused about like, I'm gonna keep this open. You know, these are all gonna be important. Let's actually let's organize these. The Rust docs, the actually here, the TypeScript reference, the Rust docs, and then we also want like Rust docs for WebSys. Yeah. <coughs> all right. Um, WebGL render context thing. Okay. Get shader parameter. Oh, all right. MDN documentation. Huh. 
Huh. Um. Yeah. All right. I don't like that this is all wrapped in like this JS value thing. Let's let's take a look at that. Um, we're gonna need another one for JS sys. JS sys docs. And what we want is uh, JS value right here. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. These are constants, so it's not so bad. So we could just um, here, let's start by just logging stuff. So if uh, is false, is false. Okay, failed to compile shader. All right, that's good. Now let's uh, unbreak the shader. Uh, vertex. Great, okay, good. All right, now we wanna get more specific error messages and we'll ultimately return it in the result. Um, yeah, okay, right on. And I feel like again this could just be one expression, but let's let's first get it with uh, statements, and then then we'll like clean it up. So turn match minus one. Um, no, it will. What is this message? Gonna, it's for sure going to be a string. <clears throat> How is that? How is it not a JS value? So get shader info. Um, info log, yeah. Option string, that's interesting. So I'm a little curious what the method, like why sometimes it's returning a JS value and other times it's returning a Rust primitive. Um, <clears throat> but all right. That's cool. Okay. Um, where were we? Right. So if that's the case, then we should just be able to um, Yeah. To this, I think we could like already try and move all this out and make this all like, a nice expression. So So if it's a, if it's a sum match, then
right? Um, I'm not sure what the, okay. I think the better approach here then would be to return an owned string. And then I feel like this is probably like some function that we could like automate. It seems like a, but okay, so it'd be string phone. Okay, I'm gonna move this out so we get the same like return types. So in context. that we're sort of like using the same name here, but whatever, it's not so bad. All right. Let's just link. This is turning up as blue also. It's kind of funky. But all right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, um you know, I just like things to kind of flow in the um, order that they're actually called in. <laughs> What's the problem here? I cannot find the right because it's a program. Okay. All right, what is status here? Get program. 
js value all right so again we have to look at the uh, docs here so if it is link status that's what we're looking for link status is going to be a boolean so it's like the same situation as before okay so oh, oh status okay, right Here we also want to get the uh, the info right, but for right now here, let's just quickly. I cannot really program, and I, I, I feel like you can just. I don't know if this. I know like in Haskell and Pure Script, that's what we do, but um, let's see. It's okay. Be the program. Oh, whoops. Hmm. Is this going to be an issue? Okay, to use a constant type of JS value in a pattern, must be annotated with. Oh. All right, I don't know if I want to mess with that because we only have like two possibilities here. So, just return like an if expression. So if uh, spiders. I think I think we're good um, as far as error handling goes. Oh wait, get program parameter. We also want to see if we can get program info log. I think I'm not sure um, how we can cause that that situation. Um, Like of the shader succeeding and the program link failing. Um, but whatever, let's just put it in. Though I feel like this is something that like could abstract, like just a general um, expected JS value of true. And if not, then call this function um, it would be kind of nice to have that because I feel like, especially with WebGL in general, there, there we might want to call this sort of thing more often of this like, because GL is sort of like a state machine. So we kind of want to um, set a state and then based on that state, read an error message or success message. Or in the bigger picture, like, of course, when things are working, you know, upload stuff to the GPU and, and draw stuff. Um, but for this, it's like to get to an option string. Is it worth it? I don't know. I think it would be a good way to learn Rust a little bit better, though. But I also want to get something on the screen today in the next, like, 30 minutes or 40 minutes or so. Um, do, 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 is it worth abstracting or not? Let's play with it a little bit just as like a function. So, um, do, uh, let's see, we want, uh, do with check, I guess, whatever. All right, and we know we want a, uh, web, you know, 
rendering context. So the truth is eventually we're going to want that to also support WebGL too, but that's not on the horizon right now. Okay, so then what we want is, um, we then want to pass a closure. Uh, I don't like that. Um, like in JavaScript, I'd, I'd love that, but here, because then it has to capture its environment. Um, and we can't like call a function by name, right? Like that's actually called the function directly. We could at least just have two versions of these. Uh, so let's see, yeah. Fine. You know what? Nah, I'm not going to bother with it. It's, I think it's just, if we end up like needing to do this like more, because here the truth is we are repeating ourselves, but we're calling these two different functions. We're calling get shader parameter and then uh, get shader info log. And then here we're calling get program parameter. And, um, and now we're going to also call, um, you know, just to demonstrate here, let me write that out so that we, um, so we can see the like repetition here. Um, so I want to get program info log. Um, is this what we're so returning? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I really don't like that we're repeating ourselves in both these situations. Like in, in JavaScript, I would do something like, um, you know, const, uh, you know, or in Haskell, pure script, also with where uh, partial application is more common. Um, but, you know, we do like f equals, like, you know, you get the GL and then the. Um, you know, function and then the info function and the data, you know, and then we could just have like, you know, const, uh, you know, get shader would be like, and then we would call it with like, you know, the GL and the, uh, well, actually the truth is we would have to call the function on GL, so we'd have to give it a name or we'd, you know, do something like uh, GL dot you know, get a shader parameter, you know, and so on, like, you know, kind of. You know, something kind of like this. I mean, conceptually, I, you know, I don't know if this would, like, be exactly how I'd write it, but that idea of, you know, then gl dot get shader info. You know, that sort of idea. I don't know if, like, doing that in Rust doesn't, I'm like kind of going over the same idea over and over again right now, but I'm really concerned about it because this sort of thing can really add up of needing to copy paste code like this. So I think I will just spend a second uh, thinking about like how I can do this. So let's do that. Let's accept functions. So uh, first of all, uh, uh, do with check. Okay. We don't even need to pass GL actually. What we really need is one function that uh, does something. So set state. I have no idea how to type uh, functions in in Rust. Um, Rust pass function as parameter. Okay. Oh, these FN types. Right. I don't really want to pass. Well, I guess I do want to pass a closure because I'm capturing. I'm capturing this state. Yeah. All right. It's really pure function in once. It should be called once because when it calls, it consumes itself and it's captured. It captures the okay. Let's let's give this a shot and just start like doing stuff. Um,
So what we want is it's a um, yeah we're definitely going to want to pass a closure because then it can just like call the function. So I don't even think we want it to. Yeah, I think. And then um, get status is going to be a function that gives us an option string. And then at the end, we want to get back an option string. Okay. Does that compile at all? No. Okay. It's just like, because we don't want to actually pass these functions anything, we just want to call them. <sighs> Doesn't have a size node at compile time. Not like this. All right, how do you pass a thunk? Let's rest pass thunk function. Let's use that syntax also. I haven't done that yet. That is going to be nice. All right, so That's interesting. Why won't it let me do that? Oh, great. Oh, all right, that's cool. Okay. Let's. So the first thing is we want to I don't want it to accept anything, but whatever. In terms of like formatting and stuff, I'll again just deal with that later. I 
and it takes a single. Okay, how do you how do you specify a function that takes no arguments? That I think is a good quick question for IRC. I'm hoping this is also kind of useful, like of sort of where to look things up and where to ask questions. I feel like IRC is better for uh, very quick sort of um, troubleshooting type things, whereas like a forum is better for big conceptual um, things where you get feedback from a lot of people over time, but whatever. Um, how do you with uh, zero. So other thing, rough thing about IRC is you can't go back and like edit. Um, if I want to put print, I want to put like do something as a function call, not just like whatever. Okay, I'm gonna move this over to the other window and keep playing around. Um, I like this, this, that we're going to abstract this out. I think that was the right call to spend some time getting this right. Um, cause I think that these kinds of things are, um, are things that like, you know, we'll say we'll do later and then we're not actually going to get back around to it ever because, you know, it's headache that, you know, once things are flying, at least me personally, once we have like stuff going on the screen and we're having fun, like, you know, moving graphics around and stuff, I don't want to go back and improve my error checking on, you know, especially if it's not actually making a difference. It's just making the code nicer. You know, so I'd rather do it now. Uh, while we're in it. And I think this is also different because we're already in this space of, we kind of know what we want to do, like reporting this library from TypeScript. So, and especially this, what we're doing right now is just getting a WebGL context. We're not going to ditch that. You know, this is not like, you know, experimental kick the tires code. This is code that we're definitely going to need. So getting it right and nice is uh, it's probably a good idea. Oh, sorry, let me move this over. Eval. Oh. 
So just to function without any, that's interesting. Let me give that a shot. in a second. All right, why is this giving us that? Okay, found the exp Oh, right, yeah, we actually want it to be a JS value. So now, now we can move this uh, logic. Set state. Okay, so if status is false, then match. I think this is where we do want it, like the kind of catch all. I'm like guessing that we must let you do that. Hmm. What? Match arms have incompatible types. Why? No. We know that our get status, let's just write status message equal get status. Okay, it's going to read an option of a string. Oh, all right. Um, Another little uh, IRC question here. So I want to know the idiomatic way to return the catch on a pattern match.
Okay, so it's just the underscore, I guess, is not okay. Let's say otherwise. That's really like. All right. But this is an important thing that I just learned uh, that that the uh, this is valid, but on the right it's not. So, like for example, this would theoretically work. Let's just test this out. Or whatever, none. Yeah. So that so that's valid. It's when we try and use it on the right that it doesn't get bound. Um, I don't like otherwise, just long, you know, so I'm just gonna, let's say any else, any, I'm getting hung up on this. So any, any, all right, whatever. That should work. This also just feels weird. Like I feel like this could be reduced, you know, like this none, none like this branching doesn't feel right. I feel like there's probably a better way, like we could make this a little nicer, but I think that's going a little too far. You know, we're, we're um, we've already abstracted a bit. Okay, so this result, we're gonna get an option. So what we wanna do is what we really wanna do is we wanna um, map that to a result, if it's okay. Like we wanna map it to a result, right? So here. Okay, so it seems people use, let's just say, value, value. All right, fine. Okay. So now I have this do with check. So we're going to get an option back. Oh, all right. Saying like to name it like what we would have used. So, yeah, all right. Let's just call it error. So now again, no matter what, if it failed, we're gonna get some sort of error message. If it didn't fail, we're gonna get it nothing, right? Um, yeah. All right, so now, I'm hoping this is saying that we can't match an option with a result. That's kind of, yeah, perfect. We expected result, found an option, excellent. So what we want to do is you want to map a option to a result. I know I've already done this a couple times and it should be like kind of muscle memory by now, but it isn't. Um, haven't done it enough yet. So option. Uh, oh, we're not on like the proper. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what we really want is an option to a result. So I'd maybe even like look on this page for result. Okay, or, okay, transforms option T into result TE mapping sum to okay and none to error. That is, is that what we want? Not really, because we don't want the we want like the opposite. Like in other words, okay, what we really want to do is we want, let's just write this out. I, I find this helps. Um, so we want an option E 
to a result t e, and we want to provide the t. Right? Okay. What else? All right. I'm going to ask about that. Yeah, but okay, that's cool. But you're saying to match. That's so okay. Let's uh, result equals, and then we'll match on it. Okay, match result, and so if it's a okay, no, sorry, some error message, then we want to return error message and if it's a none then we want to return an okay of program why are we getting a warning on this oh snake case okay Move this down because this is just a. All right. I mean, did we really save any? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, did we really save anything by abstracting this out? Um, I, the truth is, I'm going to answer yes uh, because, well, first of all, okay, we don't really need to store this in a. We're just like formatting this funky. But let's so let's just throw this on one line, whatever. Okay, I mean now we can kind of see a little better what we've saved here. Um, and more to the point, now we could bring this down here. And okay, so it's uh, gl dot. Uh, get program parameter, right? Program parameter. Um, link status, right? And we want to pass the program. And info log, pass the program. Yeah. All right, cool. That's that's nice. Looking a lot better. I, I like that. I'm glad you took the time to, to do that. I mean, this do with check is a little bit funky. It's not even set state, really. It's like, um, 
set status. See already, look like we, you know, we wanted to change this name and now just do it in one place. And also, I, you know, also I'm finding that like the more we can make things of just like into expressions, you know, not have these intermediary variables. I, I just like that. I mean, especially when the name expresses itself, like why do we have to say let status equals set status? Like, no, it's just if set, we're not reusing it anywhere, status, right? That's nice, now we're just returning this one big expression. Oh, cool, hey, someone's on the chat, awesome. Hi, Marcus, all right. Um, put the right one here. Yep, right now. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was exactly what, uh, what I learned also from Stu, the dude or girl, uh, our uh, in IRC, uh, that this whole, the underscore on the left is valid, but as a pattern that matches anything, it doesn't have a binding on the right. Um, so today I learned, thank you. Okay, cool. So now uh, we should be getting a specific um, error message in the console when we break our shader. Uh, so let's go and just take our simple shader and do something wacky. And hopefully we'll be getting... Uh-oh. -uh. All right. Okay, this... All right, good. So we've hit this a few times, and, and evidently it's be more specific to when you're doing WebAssembly or via this like WASM bind gen, that the diagnostics, and this has nothing to do with Vim, it's, uh, there's an issue on the GitHub repo that it's also in VS Code, that once you're using WASM and WASM bind gen, the diagnostic tools don't always uh, work so well. So you, we have to you know, check back with the console sometimes. Okay. What is this in lib? Oh, all right, but the truth is this is being caught. Probably we're just looking at the wrong file. Um, lib. Yeah, right on. Cool. Yeah, things are compiling. Let's go here. Hey, great, yes. Excellent. Look, we get our error in the console of the um, of the shader, the shader error. That is wonderful. That's a really good step. Um, and now when we get rid of it, it even gave us a line number. And that's really cool. Missing shaders. What? Okay. <laughs> So we're getting an error. Um, oh, I think we haven't finished our pipeline. I'm not sure actually what's going on. Let's go uh, take a look. Okay, our shader is compiling. Um, hmm. Well, this is confusing. Well, first of all, let's just change this error message since we're already dealing with like, you know, good error handling. All right, but what is um, missing shaders? Well, maybe if we just like Google about that, we'll get some info. Let's take a look at like what I did here just to so we compile the shaders um, link program. I mean this we're gonna deal with later. This has to do with um, like attribute locations that we can use globally when we're switching shaders. That's gonna be really important to add here actually. Um, 
but I'll maybe leave that as a note. First of all, we did this number one. This is a bad to-do tracker, but you know, whatever, it works. Um, okay. I don't, I don't really get why um, this is giving us a problem. You might be able to see something in uh, in Babylon, in uh, not Babylon, um, Spectre. This is a, uh, a tool provided by the Babylon team that is a lifesaver when it comes to WebGL stuff, but it's only going to work when, when stuff is at least basically working. Missing shaders. Hmm. Uh, um, you know what? No. First of all, this should be a known uh, uh, shader compiler error. Right. Um, link status. Get the value from there. First of all, we don't need that. Shader source compile shader. Oh, attach shader. We didn't call it attach shader. Okay, cool. Um, does it return anything? No, all right, it'll just, um, it'll like trigger this error that we're already checking. So great, awesome. So compile source. I think it, I think we would uh, do it uh, here. I think it'd be after this check actually. Um, right. Yeah. Let's just put it here. I mean, or maybe it should come after. Like we might want to pass it all through this like pipeline and then and then like um, attach them right before linking, but eh, let's um let's just do it in here. So gl dot attach shader. Program and shader. Yeah, cool. And we have both of those. So it is and program and shader. Okay, good. Now we're getting, uh, again, we're getting our errors in the, in the console. I don't know why we have this like extra funky character at the end here, some Unicode issue but or whatever um but this is really good um i think honestly from looking at like webgl demos uh on the web just generally I, they generally leave like all this stuff out of um of getting errors you know which like once you get past like rendering a triangle on the screen um and you, and you start writing shaders like being able to see the errors is super like important um so I'm happy that we set all this up.
from the beginning. So this is more to do with this like sort of foundational level, but all right, onwards and upwards. Uh, what was our issue? Oh, the shader itself, uh, vertex, and let's look at the um, fragment also. Um, okay. First of all, I don't. I think I want to stick to Rust's naming convention for everything. So let's lowercase all this stuff. As we copy things over from TypeScript, that's going to be an ongoing issue anyway. So um, I should have just renamed all the whatever. Okay, and I think uh, let's just bring the same um, precision back for you color, yeah. Ooh, okay, that means I gotta go. Um, but I just wanna get this. I'm trying to see, I'm really hoping this worked. Got program, excellent, awesome. Um, this means that next time we're gonna pick up either with uh, doing these things uh, clean up shader, clean up program. And I mean, three is kind of part of that, like just how do we clean things up? Um, you know, maybe this global attribute locations thing. And then we're going to actually draw something on the screen, I think. Or maybe we'll set up a um, request uh, animation frame loop so that we could start seeing, uh, you know, testing things out more easily. Because like, we're not just going to want to render like a static image. We're going to want to you know, see some movement. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think we're really in a good place to pick up next time, which might be later tonight. So until then, see ya.